I've never in my life thought about a bombing campaign to be de-escalation. And then they turned around and said, as long as Israel continues to pummel Gaza, we see ourselves united and we will do everything in our power to stop. We will do everything in our power to hit Israel, which they did shortly thereafter with drones and rockets. Okay. The, the, the uh, Ansar al uh, communicated, yes, like you said, the bombs that fall on us now fall on the people of Gaza, and that's unacceptable. This is an American action in the region. And one of the, and then one of the, the actions that Ansar al took was to put forward a blockade of all shipment going into Israel and most of the shipment that passes through the Red Sea. And as far as I understand... It doesn't take much to actually completely halt commerce in the Red Sea as long as you take like one or two ships. And that's precisely what they did. And they said over and over again, <clears throat> they said over and over again, if you want this to end, there's one goal here. Stop the ethnic cleansing in Gaza. And yes, by the way, they didn't kill anyone as well. Uh, the only uh, the only deaths in the in the Houthi Red Sea struggle was, of course, uh, uh, militants uh, from Yemen. Okay, militants from Yemen that America killed ten of them, to be exact, and uh, more now. Right, and they very successfully were able to stop the flow of shipments coming in through the Red Sea because a lot of these international shipping companies are very risk averse understandably they have insurance they have they have uh, people that you know want to stop two ships equals halting international trade i mean yeah that's literally the truth now the way that people covered this in the western world they made it seem as though the houthis were doing this to like what take over uh, largely empty shipping containers so that they could like make a living or something make a buck that's not the case. They very openly stated what their goals were. The, their goals were very clear from the start. They said, we're doing this because we want you to stop ethnically cleansing Palestinians in Gaza. Okay? That's it. But of course, you never heard that in American news. You never heard that in the Western media. The Western media covered it nonstop as though, no, these guys are just trying to make a buck. They're trying to do piracy. Um, and for people who ask me, like, do you buy that entirely? I do. I do buy it. I do. Because I don't think they have a lot to gain beyond, like, uh, showing to the rest of the world or to the rest of the region that they are in this fight to defend Palestinians, which gives them a tremendous amount of political capital. If you go to the Arab world, if you go to the Muslim world, people talk about the Houthis in a very different way. Okay? It's great PR for them. Absolutely. <clears throat> so as far as, um, as far as their secondary goals, I would say that that is a major reason. Another goal, of course, is that there will be an inevitable blowback from the Western powers that will attack Yemen, which happened, which I'm going to talk about. That's why I'm setting this up right now. And that will galvanize the support of the entire population of Yemen. You know, the Yemenis are very proud people. And once they are attacked, they will inevitably come together. And that's precisely what happened, which we will talk about as well. It was a major misstep from America to do this, to attack Yemen in general. So people throw aside even their sectarian conflicts when it comes down to America blowing their shit up. So let's take a look at how the media is covering that now. As overnight, it's from the Middle East, a major escalation in the military response to attacks on ships in the Red Sea, the U.S. and the U.K. carried out a wave of airstrikes against Iran-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen. Who are Libs are saying that Houthis are hurting people in sub-Saharan Africa by not letting med and foods through. Yes, my friend, liberals will always defend American violence. You have to remember, a Republican, a neocon, or a conservative will tell you, uh, yeah, of course we're going to bomb them. They're brown. They, they suck. They're... they're monkeys they're barbarians they deserve it a liberal can't say it like that so a liberal will often say they're not woke they're homophobic they're anti-semitic they are 
they're the worst of the worst. Like they, they don't align with our values. And it's like, you're not bombing Yemen because these guys are anti-Semitic. You're bombing Yemen because they're stopping commerce from flowing through. Now that is still a failure because just because you blew up parts of Yemen doesn't mean that shipping companies are now going to be like, okay, I guess the waterways are safe now. Let's flow commerce through, especially when Yemen turns around and goes, no, we're going to still keep it up, okay? Those guys are still risk averse. You can't change the insurance company's attitude towards, uh, you know, uh, rerouting shipments. There's also the other side of this. Bombing a country has never made that country more woke. You cannot blow up a country into being more woke. As a matter of fact, as evidence shows throughout history, bombing a country has made that country less woke, okay? Interfering in the affairs of Iran with coups and uh, instituting the Shah and, and many other things that uh, America did in Iran is still part of the reason why Iran is as reactionary as it is, okay? Japan pretty woke, not going to lie. First of all, if you think Japan is woke, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Japan certainly is not woke at all. That's number one. And the reason why... Japan is our ally or Japan has uh, favorable opinions of the United States of America is not because we nuked it. It's because we paid it. Okay. After nuking it, we turned it into an American client state. Also, they're so woke. They won't admit their war crimes. Uh, as a matter of fact, and even still celebrate it to this day. So one of the Houthi leaders said that the U S offered them to lie publicly about seizing ships, crossing the red without actually seizing them and letting the ships pass through. They refused to the offer. Wait, what? I don't know if I believe that, but that's pretty funny. Um, where was I? Where was I? Um, anyway, so let's continue with this. We're supporting Hamas in this war with Israel. Now, the U.S. military says more than 60 targets were hit at 16 different... <laughs> supporting uh, the Iran-backed Houthi rebels are supporting Hamas in its war against Israel is certainly a take. The... The Iran-backed Houthi rebels, okay, right off the jump is like, you know, they, they're just uh, Houthi, they're just some rebels, right? That's good framing. And they're Iran-backed. And then also, it's the Hamas attacking Israel, Hamas doing war against Israel. Brother, sister, Hamas is not doing, currently, for the past 90 days, Hamas hasn't done war against Israel. Israel has done war against Palestinians, in the Gaza Strip, and Hamas is on a defensive posture. Okay? Let's continue. Locations. Charlie Daggett is following all of this from Tel Aviv. Charlie, good morning. What can you tell us? <clears throat> well, good morning, Gail. This is exactly the kind of major escalation the United States has tried to avoid. Uh, a direct confrontation oh, with Iranian-backed oh, militias in this region. Oh, they hate this kind of direct confrontation. They wanted to avoid it, but they just simply couldn't. It's like the top of the hour, you know what I mean? You want to avoid it, but it comes for you regardless, right? At the top of the hour, and there's a three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, however, uh, you don't have Hellfire missiles, but what you do have is a $5 a month subscription or a free one in the form of a Twitch Prime. You know, that's right. You can also get gifted a sub. If you're lucky, here's a three-minute ad break now. Biden is taking questions right now. Sure. Not local. The federal government's paying for it. And guess what? It's changing the dynamic. And people find somebody here who thinks there shouldn't be a fire school here. Find somebody who thinks that doesn't make sense. And it's going to save money over. All right, we'll, we'll get to it when he's like actually talking about uh, Yemen at all. He does that classic old guy thing when he's like, when he's like cracked out, he does the eye thing. It's like freaky, but that's when you know that's like on the, he's doing the Mac attack. What do you think? And, 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 and a quick one on uh, oil prices, sir. Uh, oil hit eighty dollars a barrel this morning after the strikes. How concerned are you about the impact the strikes will have on oil supply and prices? I'm very concerned. That's why we got to stop it. So, how many members of your own party that believe you needed congressional authorization for last night's strike? I'm sorry. What do you say to members of your own party who are saying you needed congressional authorization for last night's strike? Ooh, good They're question. Wrong, and I sent up the I sent up this morning when the strikes occurred exactly what happened. Sir, how was your conversation? I'm sorry. What? Uh, I was pleased with my conversation with Speaker Johnson, and apparently today he said he's sticking by the deal. Thanks, everybody. Uh, Thank you. 
<laughs> yeah, one question on Yemen and he pops out. After the US and UK launched airstrikes on Yemen, it didn't go according to plan for them. Although the strikes were successful in hitting many parts of Yemen, Houthis have declared that they will not stop their blockade and they will try to help the Palestinian people. After Houthis said that they will launch retaliation on US and UK, United States warned ships to stay out of parts of Red Sea. Probably because of this reaction by Houthis, United States has launched further attacks on Yemen. This is breaking news from around 15 minutes ago that United States has launched more airstrikes on Yemen. Yeah, I saw the troll uh, video from Trump's Insta. All right. You said Brandon was awake, man. What the hell is this? I mean, he was earlier. He was a second ago when he had the eyes open like this. You know what I mean? Expanding the war beyond the battlefields of Gaza and drawing the United States deeper into this conflict. Overnight and at sea, the U.S. military scrambled tactical support aircraft and F-18 fighter jets, spearheading a bombing campaign, including U.S. warships and submarines and British Royal Air Force typhoons and refueling aircraft taking off from Cyprus. Cockpit footage is said to show strikes on Houthi targets in Yemen. U.S. military officials say more than 100 precision-guided munitions struck over 60 targets at 16 locations, including the capital Sana, command centers, missile and drone launch sites, and air defense systems. Eyewitness. Yeah, this is a. Uh, this was presented as like an act of de-escalation, which I find very funny. I mean, it is like Israel learned everything it did from us straight up. Okay. Israel can always say we learned it from you, dad, to the United States of America, because they operate in the same exact way. I've never in my life thought about a bombing campaign to be de-escalation. Okay. How are we de-escalating? How is it a de-escalatory? De de is that even a word? A, a, a bombing campaign. It's nuts. Those same Yemenis now in support of defending Palestine, 1,000%. They say at least better than the rest of the Arab leaders. Oh, 100%. Apparently, a second round of strikes occurred last night as well on 12 more targets. Thread here. Nice. The way they describe the strikes, almost all libs just reading the news assume the Houthis went on a sailor massacre. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So here's what this uh, round of bombing didn't do. Any of the goals it set out to achieve. If your goal was to if your goal was to create instability in Yemen, well guess what? That's been tried and failed already. Okay? That was tried. What do you think the Saudis were doing for the past what, like 10 years since 2014 especially so? And it didn't work. And it was an abject failure from the start. And then and then well 9 years. And then beyond that, beyond that. Okay? If your goal was to make sure that commerce could flow through the Red Sea, well, they keep saying they're not going to stop. They're just going to retaliate extra hard. So the fact that uh, the, the, the uh, Ansar Allah communications from this process is like, no, we're just going to keep going at it. Fuck you. Well, then the shipping companies hear that. They're not going to go and say, all right, I guess we can now continue uh, you know, putting our ships through the Red Sea. So you failed on that front and the destabilization that is supposed to occur in this bombing campaign all of a sudden magically galvanized and not magically, but of course, expectedly, understandably galvanized the population to support uh, whoever is going to defend them. They framed it as neutralizing the cruise missile and ballistic missile capabilities that threaten shipping. Time will tell whether the Houthis can conduct large scale attacks now, like on January 9th. We'll see. And basically... I mean, this is a meme, but it is, it is the most, this is the most, like, this is the correct, the most correct way of looking at the situation. I can excuse genocide, but I draw the line that delays the shipping. And by the way, they openly stated that, too. Like, obviously, every kind of action that America engages in, such as this one, is at the behest of capital. But absolutely wild. Absolutely wild to openly state that the reason why we are bombing Yemen, a whole new country in this conflict, was because shipping times. There were shipping delays. 
To openly state that is crazy. This video on the ground shows the impact from a series of explosions that struck in the early hours. The U.S.-led strikes came in response to dozens of attacks from Iranian-backed Houthi militants on Red Sea targets since October, including the largest and most brazen earlier this week, undeterred by repeated U.S. warnings they would bear full consequences. That marked a turning point, and last night's retaliation may carry its own consequences for this region. And this morning, Houthi leaders said this aggression will not go unanswered, threatening to keep on attacking those ships that are passing through the Red Sea to Israel, with President Biden saying he will not hesitate to act further if that continues. Vlad? Charlie Daggett in Israel for us. Thank you, Charlie. We're joined by the Pentagon's press secretary, Major General Patrick Ryder. General Ryder, good morning. Good to see you. Hey, good morning, Vlad. Thanks for having me. So, uh, General, as you know, these strikes were aimed at Houthi military targets, including facilities known to have uh, radar and missiles. A couple of questions for you there. What's the extent of the damage? How long did the strikes last? And were Yeah, love, love to have the guy from Arlington come and talk about how this is a de-escalatory measure. Um, so we've been covering the... We've been covering, like, Hamas's popularity increasing as a consequence of being, like, the sole defender of Palestinian people against Israeli aggression, which is an understandable thing that occurs when a, a, uh, a, a violent foreign entity is, like, killing a, a, a population. Whoever is defending is going to be seen as the, you know, the, the real emancipatory force that is profoundly popular. Something I literally talked about with respect to the Azov Battalion in Ukraine and more nationalist elements within Ukraine becoming heroes, right? Going from a, a marginal group to becoming direct heroes for Ukrainians. And that, that literally happened. That, uh, it, it happened in Ukraine. Of course it's going to happen. Why wouldn't it? They are the guys who are defending Ukraine at that point. Okay? Same principle applies everywhere okay same principle applies everywhere same principle applies globally you would not care if someone was blowing your house up and and uh someone came to your uh defense with arms it doesn't matter even if they were you know the, the the fat gravy seals type dudes who were like reactionary as hell in that very moment you would literally say no this is my guy thank you thank you for defending me okay <sighs> Not to, like, ideologically muddy the waters here. I'm not saying that uh, uh, at all. So, attacking the Houthis, attacking Yemen in general, was a, a gigantic misstep, in my opinion. The appropriate way to deal with this, the appropriate way to deal with this, was not to attack Yemen, but to try to de-escalate Israel. Try to get Israel to, to pull back, Okay. It's important to remind Libs that the Houthis might be fundamentalists, etc., but they are still rational actors. They aren't just going to do piracy for shits and giggles. If Libs want to dismiss their claims for, of doing it for Gaza, they need to explain an alternative motive for the Houthis doing it at this time. Uh, makes sense, and they can't. They just say that the Houthis are doing it because they hate Jews or America, but why now, though, and not sooner? Well, <laughs> they can't explain it, so they literally immediately jump a step and turn around and talk about now that one, like, Saudi article about how, like, the Houthis actually restored slavery or something. After Biden launched these attacks on Yemen, some Republicans have shown rare praise for him. But there are also several Republicans and Democrats who have criticized Biden for these actions in some way or another. Pramila Japal wrote on X that this is an unacceptable violation of the Constitution. Cory Bush said that the people do not want more of our taxpayer dollars going to endless war and the killing of civilians. Some people have also argued that instead of retaliating against the Houthi militias and risk another escalation or another war in the Middle East, the US and its allies should be pressing Israel to end its invasion of Gaza and accept a ceasefire, as the Houthis have agreed that they will stop their blockade and allow the ships to pass if Israel agrees to a ceasefire and stops its bombing of Gaza. You can write your opinion of this conflict in the comment section below.
and if you enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more videos and thanks for watching